WatchDriver Pro version 2.3 released earlier this week for Unreal 4.24 and 4.25, and this is the Parallel States update, which lets you run more than one active state at a time. Before we get into that, I want to cover some changes in this that might affect your project. And basically, there's some deprecations, and then the file structure has changed slightly. So make sure that, one, you should back up and commit any changes before you upgrade to the new version. And you should be doing that for any plugin, especially when it either increments the major or minor version. It's similar to Unreal Engine, right? You probably want to back up before you upgrade from like 424 to 425. Um, it, regardless, everything's backwards compatible. So uh, everything should work fine. Um, the, the big change that you might, might want to look out for is node class defaults. And what, what this means is any value that was uh, previously available directly on the node, like uh, exclude from any state, always update, um, that is now available uh, in the class blueprint itself. Uh, so you can see here, always update, exclude from any state. If you check it here and you go back, um, you can see update the defaults. Um, any new nodes you place will have that value. And if you change it here, it will recognize, oh, hey, this node's different now. It, basically, this behaves like class defaults would anywhere else. Um, and it, everything should work fine. It's just it was a pretty big behind the scenes change to actually import your old values properly and get them to work. So please, you know, bear that in mind and just double check your projects to make sure everything still behaves as you expect. There are also deprecations, mainly around how you might retrieve uh, the active state, and that had to happen because now there are multiple active states. So if you go under the uh, the patch notes and then the documentation as well, um, they'll tell you what what's changed and they'll recommend what method to use instead. And you, your project will still work. Uh, the, the current methods you use will just be deprecated. So you might have to you know, deal some warnings from the Blueprint compiler telling you that you should change the method out. Let's go check out the Parallel States feature. The example project's quest example map has been updated. So the state machine here will now run two state machines in parallel. Uh, normally, when you uh, drag a connection from the entry point, you're only allowed one connection. This is the old behavior. If you want to allow parallel behavior, you just go up here and check this box. And now if a connection already exists, it will allow a second one to be placed. And then all this does is both of these nodes are considered initial nodes. And so when you start the state machine, both become active at once. Uh, in this example, there is a conduit class I created that will wait for each of these state machines to be in an end state before continuing. And all it does in this case is it checks the incoming transitions and makes sure they have finished by validating that they are in fact in an end state. Now let's watch this happen in runtime. Both are active at once. When we complete one, it should stay active. But once we complete the second one, the conduit node will become true, and the state machine will finish. There is a new skills example map included in the example project, and this demonstrates one possible skill tree implementation. Uh, previously, a skill tree was somewhat difficult to do in Logic Driver, uh, mainly because you're left with having to navigate the tree yourself, figuring out if the state was active or not. Maybe you'd use your own Boolean value to determine that. Uh, with parallel states, that makes it quite a bit easier. So this brings me to the second way to do uh, parallelism. It, previously, I showed you how to uh, branch off of the entry point. You can also do the same thing from states. So you notice that these transitions have two lines for each one. That means they're configured to run in parallel. Uh, if you select them, you have a run parallel option. So if I unclick it, it goes back to the singular approach. And if I uh, click it, it goes back to double. Um, the way transitions evaluate is they're, they evaluate based on the order they're placed or based on their priority order. So in this case, this one's 0, this one's 1, and it would evaluate you know, left to right in this case. And on singular behavior, what happens is if this guy ends up becoming true, it switches states, calls on state exit, and this guy is never evaluated. Uh, when they're configured to run in parallel, then say this one becomes true, this state does become active. But this state will not exit yet. What happens is it finishes the evaluation chain until either a singular transition is hit or all of them have run. And so it's possible to then have you know, multiple active states branching out of a uh, regular state node. And then only after they've all finished will the state exit. 
So that brings me to the next point is what if you don't want the state to exit? In the case of a skill tree, you generally want the states to probably stay active, right? right? Like say this state becomes active, you know, in one tick, but you don't get the next one until like several I don't know, minutes later. Um, you still need to stay active, so we'll continue to evaluate these transitions. And this, there's a really easy way to do that. Stay active on state change. You click that, and then once the state you know, switches where it would normally exit before, it does not, and it remains active. And then you can do the same thing from other branching states as well. Uh, the states nodes themselves have a default to parallel option. And this is just a shortcut. If I uncheck that, it automatically turns any outgoing transitions you know, to whatever state this is. You can toggle them back and forth. Um, and then also any new states you place will default to that behavior. Let's view this during runtime. The first token unlocks the first skill. And notice that this transition does not constantly evaluate. That is because eval if next state active is unchecked. If it were true, it'd constantly evaluate. Uh, this state actually wouldn't do anything unless the state itself had allow parallel reentry checked. And in that case, the on state begin method of high jump would be called every time the transition reevaluated. Uh, but on state end would actually not be called until this state officially exits. The next token unlocks the uh, next skill. And now all are active. And you, you can see that it's, it's ticking constantly. Uh, we don't actually need that. You could turn off tick, uh, use event-based transitions, or update the state machine on your own, depending like maybe when your level increases. It's really up to your implementation. Uh, this next part will save the state machine state and shut it down. And then you'll see that your abilities have all disappeared as well. As soon as you leave, it reloads the state machine from the previous states. And this just demonstrates uh, what it takes to uh, save and reload the state machine. If you go to the skill save actor on overlap, all it does is it grabs the uh, skill tree from the character, gets the state machine instance from that component, and then calls get all active state goods and stores them here. What you would want to do is serialize this to disk if you wanted to save, and then on reload, you just grab the instance again, and then you call the method load from multiple states and pass in those same goods. Then when you press start or call start on the state machine, it will uh, use those initial goods as the initial state. And this is how you would do something if you want to persist. I mean, realistically, a skill tree would probably want to persist through play sessions. So this is how you would achieve it. The last item I want to cover is something new with this update. There is a new example project available under the uh, Recursoft GitHub. And this is a blueprint only combat example project, which demonstrates uh, objectives, achievements, and some parallel AI behavior. To download it, we just need to go in our code, download zip, and then extract it, and run the uh, uproject file. This project is very similar to the AI map from the example project, except now there are a bunch of AI, and they will move toward you and attack you. They'll jump, if they jump, they'll do damage when they collide. <laughs> The state machines here are achievements, AI, missions. Uh, the AI one is going to be, uh, well, if we, the movement part of the AI is very similar to, or actually identical to the normal example project. However, there are also two other state machines running simultaneously now. Uh, one is an engagement one, and this is, if you're in range, he's going to uh, do his little attack move, basically a jump, and the NPC is configured to attack. And if he collides with you at that point, you, you take damage. The other one that's, that's pretty nifty um, is communicate. And the idea behind this one is if uh, one target sees you and the other targets nearby don't, um, he will get his nearby friends and basically notify them that there is that where you are. And uh, all of these are, are pretty basic, right? Like it, when you play this, it's, I mean, it's not gonna be perfect. It's, it's a really simple implementation to help you get started and hopefully puts you in the right direction to develop something a little bit more complex. Also running is a mission system. And this is sort of similar to the quests in the normal example project. 
um, you have a, a find the tokens one, which is pretty much directly taken from the example project. But there's also an elimination mission, and these have quest objectives where they're basically looking to see how many targets you can kill. Um, and they run in parallel, they wait for the end. The, the new one in here that is quite a bit different is an achievement system. And the achievement system basically really needed parallel states to even to work at all. And in this example, there is basically quick succession kills and then headshot kills. And they both run at once. These are both state machines that operate. Um, the quick kills, you can see double kill, triple kill, all these really cool ones. Um, <laughs> the sound effects are recorded by uh, an individual known as Radlock. And he does, uh, he likes to do voice acting. He's really talented. Um, his website's uh, listed in the example project. Uh, you should check him out. Um, he also did the, uh, the headshot kills. Anyway, how this operates is each of these have their own node class, and the transition uh, checks the next item in the list, and it basically sees if you've um, reached your kill count or not before you can uh, switch over. So what's really going on is each state is already active, and then it switches once it's made and uh, this is just one implementation of it, right? Like you may want it where uh, this isn't active at all. Maybe you have a, uh, you know, an entry state. Then it switches. Um, you know, only switches if you hit two kills or not. It's uh, it, it's really up to you on, on how you want this to go. And if we uh, go up a level, uh, the state machines have a self transition, which all it does is it checks your time limit, and then it, it retransitions. And so if it does that, a self transition will call exit on this and it will basically restart it. So it will be back here at its initial state. The last thing I want to cover before we demo this is the clock icon that is over each of these nested state machines. That is new as of this update, and that means that they each have a wait for end state checked under their details panel. Um, see, normally if that wasn't there, this clock wouldn't be there, and then each of these would already be an end state. So the owning state machine um, would be considered an end state itself, and the transition out you can see it's waiting for it to reach one. And so it would sort of just like exit immediately. Uh, with this checked, uh, this, what that means is each of these guys, like the movement one, will execute all the way through until an end state is reached. And only once it's reached will any transitions out begin to evaluate or uh, the owning state machine will be considered in an end state. Uh, so for these guys, engagement is a, there is no end state, so it loops forever. Same with communicate, which means only when movement is an end state Will this guy be in an end state? And then it'll reevaluate the uh, rest of the states. Let's shoot some baddies. Headshot, double kill. Headshot. Double kill. Triple kill. Most mega kill. Ultra kill. Double kill. Triple kill. Multi kill. Headshot, double kill. 